Hey friends, welcome to Wednesday night. Uh, we missed last night. Matt was out of town and I was out of town. So uh, we're back now, ready, live. <laughs> well, live if, right now. Uh, but we, I just want to continue today with uh, Victorious Living, overcoming life's storms, which you know there are kind of storms coming at everybody today. You know, uh, it, the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust, but we have a Savior who helped us get through all of that, don't we? So I'm thankful for that. And, and it's important, especially today in this hour where there seems to be so much going on in the world. I mean, we live in, a, in, in perilous times, Paul said, and told Timothy that back 2,000 years ago, and then we certainly are there still today. But that's all right. We're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And if we testify of God before us, who can be against us? And I would encourage you out there uh, to begin to speak the things, speak the word of God. Just talking to someone a while ago that had a little, it's going through a, a time of discouragement and anxiety. But you know, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. You know, fear, anxiety, and worry, and care is all bordered, uh, uh, bound up in that word fear. And that's what the enemy wants us to live in, but he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. We know that storms will come. You know, I wrote down, storms come to all, storms of sickness and suffering and pain and sorrow and disappointment and death and stress. I mean, you can go on and on, disease, uh, rejection, neglect, uh, relationship problems, financial problems, every kind of thing you can think of. And if you're not careful, they can overcome us and cause depression and cause discouragement and despair. But we're not to do that. We're to build our house on the rock. You know, we, uh, two weeks ago, I talked about building, when Jesus, the parable of building your house on the rock, there were two men and they built their houses and one built it on sand and the other built it on a rock. Well, we know the rock for us is Jesus Christ and his word, amen. But, it, you know, storms came to both of them, but one one didn't make it. One's house blew over it. Uh, we were just up in, in uh, uh, Cincinnati for a few days and we were up there, they had a bad storm go through. Uh, just north of Cincinnati, northeast of Cincinnati, a little town named Goshen, uh, they had an EF2 tornado come through with no warning. And it it took out a number of houses and it blew them away, you know, blew, but there were other houses that were still standing. So I don't know, you, you have to build your your house on the rock of God. And, and so we're to do that and to overcome every situation. And, uh, you know, it's it's important to know that, hey, we have one that's paid a dear, dear price for us. Jesus paid a price for uh, us for eternity. And so he wants us to live in peace and enjoy the Lord. You know, Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't worry about anything. Now, if Paul could say that from all the things he went through, you know, Paul, uh, you can find it in the scripture, but he was, he, he had so many things happen to him. I mean, he was shipwrecked and he was... Uh, uh, beaten many times over, incarcerated, uh, just a number of things happened to him just for what? Preaching the good news. And so there are things that happened to him, but he said he wasn't moved by those things. He overcame those things. And he says he fought the good fight of faith. That's really fighting the fight of faith is standing in the presence of God in the midst of the trouble and, and proclaiming who you are in Christ Jesus. And listen, he always, listen to 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the other one I like so well, 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Thanks be to God who always, say always, you can say that for yourself tonight, always leads us in triumph in Christ. In other words, he's already paid the price. We disagree with him and go from that point. He always puts us, uh, brings us through, amen? And as mature Christians, as we mature as Christians, we're to put our faith in him on a constant basis. We're not to, we're not to take what the enemy's throwing at us and say, well, okay, sirrah, sirrah, what will be, will be. No, we have a right to stand against the wiles of the devil. In fact, we're told to do that very thing. And because we don't fight flesh and blood. You're not fighting your husband or your wife or, or your children. You're fighting the, the forces of evil that are trying to uh, separate us. That's what the enemy wants to do. This last two years have been a, 
way of separating us from the body of Christ. Why? Because we need each other. We need to be in, in, in the services. We need to be encouraging one another. And that's what it says in Scripture. It says, uh, pray one for another, encouraging one another, lift the burdens off of one another, help one another. And, and so we can't do that if we're not together. And that's what the enemy wants us. He wants to separate us. Just like in the wild kingdom, what do they do? The, 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 uh, the adversaries, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, predators go after the ones that are separated from the herds all the time. You see that. Well, that happens in, the, in, the, in our human life too many times. He wants us to be over and sitting in darkness and, and away from uh, what goes on in life instead of what being brought out of those things. But the pressures come to all of us. Pressures come to all of us. But we have to know and remind ourselves on a regular basis, God's got my back. God's helping me through this. God's walking me through this. We've had so many testimonies of people going through things, uh, you know, t really tremendously hard things and many times, but stood on the word of God and see God perform his word in Jesus name, right? So storms come to all of us and we have to recognize that in the midst of that, we have God's favor. You ever talk, think about your God's favorite? Well, how can I be? I've done such and such and such. No, he sees us through the eyes of his son, Jesus, who delivered us from sin, sickness, poverty, perversion, and gave us a, a home in heaven for eternity. Wow, what a, what a deal. What a deal. And, and he sees us. He, he's like your children. You know, you, if, I don't know how many of you have children out there, but you love your children, even if they've done wrong, or even if they're not doing right tonight. Pray for them and thank them. Thank God for them that the favor of God will be upon them, that they'll come to know him, amen, if they don't already. So we have to know that God's presence is in a, in a place where we can put ourselves. Over in Psalm 91, I read this last time, but we need to read it again. And you need to read it for yourself. Maybe tonight you're going through some things and you need, you need God's help and you think, what do I do? Read this in first person. Read Psalm 91 in first person. This is how it goes. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, he'll be your protector. He's who you are. But then it says something key for all of us because many times we can hear somebody else preach or talk, but we don't space the things we're supposed to say ourselves. But this is what it says. I will say of the Lord. Say that with me. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. And it goes on to say, my God in him will I trust. Say that for yourself. He's my God and in him will I trust. That's what you're doing. You're, you're putting your faith in him. You're confessing him. You're building yourself up by speaking the words of life. It goes on to say, surely he shall deliver and put your, whatever your name is, or, or just say me. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. You shall not, I shall not be afraid of the terror by night. You know, terror by night. You ever get woke up in the middle of the night and, and think of things that are happening and circumstances that are not good or maybe and brings anxiety and worry? He doesn't want us to do that. And God says, I'll deliver him from those things in the middle of the night, the terror by night. And goes on to say, nor the arrow that flies by day, which is sudden alarm. I think of that, that EF2 that went through Goshen. They were interviewing a man that was in his house and never even knew it was happening. And all of a sudden it hit and it blew his house up. He was saved. He wouldn't, he wouldn't hurt, uh, but it blew him around in the house. But it was a sudden thing, nor the pestilence that walks uh, in darkness. Well, what's pestilence? It can be disease. It can be sickness. It can be... A lot of things, but uh, namely disease. He'll deliver us from that. Nor of the destruction or the ruin that lies at waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. You need to be saying this in your first person. That Read this and put confidence in this. Uh, and it goes on to say, only with your eyes shall you look and see the rewards of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, my dwelling place, no evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over me. 
You know, you have angels, you know that? Listen, those are real things. <laughs> they're, they're, they're there to, uh, to minister to us and help us through this life to keep you in all your ways in their hand. They shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a, a stone. You shall tread upon the water and the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent. You shall tread underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. How many of you know, do you know his name? Are you familiar with who he is? Is he just Jesus off in a far off place or is he Jesus your Lord and Savior? You need to say, oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you and praise you that you died for me. You know what? He would have died just for you if that was the only one it needed that needed that he gave his life for. He would have died for that. That makes it so personal makes it so personal and it comes right back to where we where we live right here he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in what in trouble in the storms of life he'll be with us amen and i like this part i will deliver him and honor him how many of you know it'd be it's a great thing to be honored by the lord it's a great thing to be honored by the lord and it says with long life i will satisfy him and show him my salvation you ought to be saying that to yourself. With long life, the Lord's going to satisfy me and show him my, him my, or me my salvation, the one he's died for me and what he did for me. Amen? So those are important things. And then another psalm that's really good to read is Psalm 107. It talks about being thankful to the Lord. These are things that will help you overcome the storms of life. Now, in, in storms, you know, storms will come. Let's go over to... Uh, Mark chapter 4. I may have read this before, but hey, listen, uh, Brother Hagin, uh, Keith Moore said Brother Hagin uh, uh, helped him to overcome uh, repetition <laughs> when he would say things over and over. And if you ever heard of Keith Moore speak, he, he, from week to week to week, his series always, the week before, always kind of copies what's coming next and then he adds to it. So anyway, this is. Uh, Jesus and, and the disciples are out getting out on a boat. And it says, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let's cross over to the other side. Brother Hagin used to say that when he would get in a plane and, and one of the, the crew and, and team were flying somewhere. And he said, now let's go over to the other side. He was always ready to do that. Now, when they left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. Wow, imagine that. Here the winds are blowing, and, and a storm's coming, and, and rocking the boat, and he's asleep. But here's what happened. And, he, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are pay, perishing? Wow, what a, what, a, what a question to ask the one who's about ready to give his life for us all. And, and has walked and showed him miracles and signs and wonders and did marvelous things. And, and yet, do you not care? <laughs> That's a, <laughs> I don't think I want to be saying that, do you? And it says, do you not care that we, are, that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. Now, what did Jesus do right there? He spoke to the problem. He spoke to the storm. How many of you are speaking to your storm rather than saying, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Things are all coming around me, all coming down around me. No, speak to that storm and the authority that God gives you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And then it goes on to say, and the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? No faith. Well, first of all, he... When he said that, faith has a voice. Faith speaks. You know, if you're not speaking to something, you're probably not in faith. If you can say things like, uh, uh, I'm going through this trial, but thank be to God who always leads me in victory or gives me victory in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're leading me through this in Jesus' name. I rebuke the, the, the devourer. I rebuke the one that's trying to take whatever. If it's a sickness, you can rebuke sickness. Speak to your body. If you got fever, if you got COVID, if you got any other thing, speak to it and tell it to get out. It has no right to be there in Jesus' name because Jesus paid the price by the stripes he bore upon his back. Amen? Amen. This is good news. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? 
You know, it, it, we, we, we see that and we read that, but do you see what Jesus did? Well, when the problem comes, the first place you need to go is to the word of God or Jesus, amen? And then secondly, make wise decisions. Make wise decisions about what you're to do. Speak to those things and then speak to the storms. Now, as we continue on to tonight, today, I want to talk to you about what to do when the storms do come. We started doing that with this, uh, this uh, uh, passage here with Jesus in the boat and the storm came. But what do we do right in the midst of a storm? Well, the first thing we need is run to God's word. Run to God and his word. And listen, Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And listen, we, need, we can't see our path too well sometimes when we're covered up with worry and despair and, 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 and maybe even torment. We can't see it, but when the word of God will lead us, the word of God is a lamp. It'll be able to shine out to where we need to go so we're not stumbling through life and not having any hope. Amen? So we're to do that. Now, secondly, we begin to speak the word. That's what he just said in that to, to rebuke the storm. And he told them, where's your faith? Why didn't you speak to it? Basically, is what he's saying. Speak to those things. Psalm 19, 14 said, the, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In other words, he wasn't just thinking about things, his thought life, he was speaking things. And he said, God, let them be, uh, you know, let them be uh, appropriate. What I'm saying, am I speaking your word? Speak the word only. That's what the centurion, remember that story about the centurion, that, that uh, servant was, uh, servant was hurting and, and was sick and, and uh, you know, must have been very, very sick. And he came to Jesus or he had men come to Jesus. If you read that as it, in the account, he had somebody come in his name, in the centurion's name, and he said, just speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. And he was. He asked Jesus, now, we can speak the word. Speak the word only. Don't, don't speak the problem. Speak to the problem with the word of God. It has no right to be there. And this is what the promise says. How many of you know this book is so full of promises and benefits? That's when Psalm 103 Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Amen. Who, who, who uh, cleanses me from disease and, 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 and all types of things. Amen. Well, there's so many benefits. You can go read that Psalm 103. But we have to know that he has given us ways out of our troubles, even though they still come. Now, we, why do we want to go to God's word? Well, in, in uh, John 17, 17, it says, God's word is truth. I mean, you know, we're, it's so hard to find truth today. I don't know what newscasts you watch or what television programs you watch, but so many of them are filled with lies and, and, uh, and, and deception that we don't know many times. You don't get a straight answer about some of these things that are going on in the world, but you can always depend on God's word because it never changes. It never changes. God's word is truth. Why? Because God is a truthful God. Amen. Now, and then begin to confess uh, what, what his word says. Begin to speak to it openly, but confess it. Just like we were talking about Psalm 91. Over in Hebrews, you know the scripture, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, it says this. Uh, I'll get to it in a second here. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing that we have such a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. In other words, don't waver with your confession. You know, you can, have, you can be having thoughts in your mind, but you begin to speak the word of God. They overcome the things of the, of the mind. Amen? And it becomes the word over your mind. And so we begin to speak those things and speak it in faith. Now, what does Mark 11, 23 and 20, uh, 22 and 23 say? Well, we, this is, you know, this is a very important scripture to get down and, and understand. It's not just for the pastors, not just for the preachers. It's for everyone. This, this remark was made to uh, the group of disciples which Jesus was with at the, to the time. And they had come back and they saw the fig tree had been cursed and the root dried up at the root, and it says, now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the root, and Peter, remembering, to, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. 
Now, listen. What did Jesus say? Well, he didn't say, I'm the only one that can do that. I'm, I'm you know, I'm deity. I, I'm the, no, he says, you have faith in God. Put your faith in God. Because there's so many things you can have faith in, but if you put your faith in God, and then he says this. This is what, <laughs> this is what always gets me. He's saying to this group of people, he's not, he's not saying, I'll do it for you. He's saying it's already been paid for, so here's what you do. For as surely I say to you, whoever... I assume you're a whoever tonight, says to this mountain. Now, what's the mountain? It could be the storm of life. It could be the financial problem. It could be a relationship problem. It could be a sickness. It could be whatever is going on in your life that brings torment and discouragement and despair. You can overcome that. That's your mountain. You can say to the mountain, be removed. In other words, get out. You have no right to be here. Get out and be cast into the sea and does not what? Here's a real key for this. This is why you continually say your confession. This is why you continually read the word so that you won't be overcome to, to uh, uh, languish in doubt. Do not doubt in his heart. Does not doubt in his heart. In other words, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be worried. Don't let it be overcome with doubt and unbelief. You get in the word long enough and it becomes a real thing to you. you it, something can attack you and say, no, no, I know that's not God. Here's what God says, right? So you have that in you, and it says, but believes that those things that he says, who's the he? You and me, the one that says it, right? He says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Wow. Wow. Now that's, here's where the fight is. The fight is in your, in your mind. The battle the field is in your mind because your mind keeps wanting to say that. Now, you believe that's really true? So you got to overcome that with the word of God. you got to overcome and says, hey, this is what God says. Let God be true and every man a liar. In other words, everyone that contradicts his word because he's the truth. He is the truth. Amen? Then it goes on to say something like this. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. What are you praying about? Are you... Are you uh, 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 nullifying your prayers when you say, well, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. No, you don't nullify them. You say, no, this is what God says. I'm standing on the word of God, standing. You know, over in Paul says, when you've done all to do, uh, stand, stand therefore, you know, and then you have the, the, the armor on. That's what he says over in Ephesians 6. You ought to go over and read that because that, it tells exactly what we're fighting against and it tells us how to fight those fights. And so we need to know those things. So, uh, what else? James. Uh, I, I had James 1, 22 through 25. I had it in the Amplified, but I turned my phone off so it wouldn't ring. <laughs> but I'll read it, what it says in here. Be, but be doers of the word. How many of you know we need to be doers of the word? And not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer. Now, this is what happens a lot of times. This is why religion can take over and not have a relationship. And why churches sometimes go and listen to a pastor or a preacher and then uh, and doesn't say it for themselves. You know, we had a, a, a man in one time uh, that was ministering to us years ago. And he had looked up this word and, and, and really preached on it. A doer of a word comes out to be a poet. And it be a doer of the word, it could be a poetic performer. In other words, you're saying what God says. You're performing that, just like he would say it himself. But it also means doing things. What's the word say? Be obedient to what the word says. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Wow. Listen, my friends. But he who looks in the perfect law of liberty. What is the perfect law of liberty? It's the word of God. It's what God has, has laid out for the, uh, since before the foundation of the world. And it goes on to say, and continues in it. Doesn't just start out in it. You know, a lot of times people start a race uh, quick to start, but they don't finish. How many of you want to finish your course? How many of you want to finish your race? How many of you want to be, hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant? you got to continue in the word of God. And it's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Wow, that's important. Become doers of the word. Get busy. 
Get doing the things that God said to do. Get in the word of God. Begin to proclaim the word of God for yourself and over your life storms and situations because God is for you and it says right there, you do those things, you'll be blessed in what you do. Hallelujah. What a, what a wonderful thing to know. Now, I'm going to close out right there because we only got a little time left. But next week, I'm going to continue with this because we need to know things. We need to hear things over and over and over. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing, not just one time, hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. It's how we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Are we saying what God has said that we're supposed to speak and what we're supposed to say? Are we agreeing with him? It's important that we be in agreement with him. So I, I trust you're getting something out of this. I certainly do. I always like to say, <laughs> if you didn't get anything, I sure did because I'm preaching to myself. So let's, let's close in prayer and, and thank God that he's always made a way out. Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you so, so very much that you make a way where there seems to be no way, that you lead us in the paths of righteousness and, and down that place where we can go and we know where our help comes from. We look up to the hills where our help comes from. In other words, we look to heaven and we know that you're always there protecting us, backing us up, helping us through situations. We know that storms will come. We know that life gets difficult at times, but in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy and peace forevermore. So we ask you to help us to walk in those things, do what you've called us to do, and be blessed like this word of God has said we will be when we do what you ask us to do and be obedient to do it. And so we thank you for it. I thank you for everyone in the sound of my voice. Whatever they may be going through tonight, know that God is for them, not against them. So we just pray that and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Been good to be with you. See you next time.